inside out that I knew myself from West Virginia and Springfield, I limit myself to a, to a safe subject, literary fiction. I'm often asked why I'm here a writer, and I have not found a satisfactory answer except to say that I am who I am, and Joe Marsh always wanted to write. If I can somehow let you into my life so I can show you why I write. I suppose my life has been a series of adventures, not so dazzling or grand, but the kind we all experience, and as I like to say, not less remarkable than the ones of Odysseus. If I had to pick a time where my journey began, I would pick Christmas of 1863. It was Christmas Eve, and we were just outside of a raging war. Father had lost a great deal of money in a bad business venture just some years before, so the March family was not so grand as the ones had been. But we were able to keep our house and we made ends meet as best as we could. When the war came, Father was, well, Father was too old to join the war as a soldier, so he joined Mr. Lincoln's army as a chaplain. He had left through Virginia the spring before and money matters were difficult, but it was still Christmas Eve and the March family was nothing except for spirited.
It seems like Josephine has left today before I could give her a piece. One for each of the girls, one dollar each. Thank, thank you very much. You can thank me by spending it wisely and not foolishly like these girls are accustomed to these days. Thanks thank so much. much. Would you like some tea? <laughs> Nothing of that sort. I best be heading out. I don't want to catch my death from the cold outside. This was not a trip I anticipated on taking, dear. I understand. We'll be pleased to know that I received a letter from Mr. Mark today. He is quite well and speaks optimistically of the winter ahead. <laughs> the foolish nephew! Going out to go join the war, leaving his family behind with no one to take care of? No, to have ourselves! Yeah. Thank you, Aunt Fudge. And please accept my woman's Christmas wishes. Well, good day to you all. Christopher Columbus! Oh, oh Dola! I wish I had Christmas after all. Here you are, Marie. Can you believe what she said about Father? I shall get a new box of famous drawing pencils. I really need them. I shall get that blue and yellow one. You know the one, Joe. We saw at Macy's. Nothing like that for me. I had my eyes on those volumes for as long as I can remember, and now I can finally get them. What about you, Beth? Do you think we are expected to machine use it? Well, maybe I should buy a new hair ribbon. What do you think, Meg? Well, if you only buy a few hair ribbons, you might have enough for some pencils as well. Miss Marsh, Miss Marsh, this has just come. Oh, dear, it's the homos. Her baby is coming soon. Please fetch my cloak, Hannah. But you haven't had your Hurry, there's no time to waste. But who are the homos? The family that lives by the warehouses. Mr. Homos was killed in Virginia last year. And there's no one to look after Mrs. Joe, you are in charge of the household tonight. Meg, please watch your sister and make sure that Beth takes her medicine. Good night, my dear. Good, Good night, night Mommy. I don't see why the Hummels have to bring our Christmas Eve. The Hummels have bigger problems in deciding whether they want hair ribbons or pencils. But dear Mommy. Oh, somehow wishing for new sheet music seems so selfish of me. Hey, look. Mommy's slippers. See how warm they are? I have an idea. How about I get her a new pair of slippers? No, no, no. I'll get her a brand new pair of slippers. I know this. She left me in charge. I'll get her. How about this? We can all get her something for Christmas and not worry about ourselves. Really? That is so likely. What shall we get her? Well, if you're going to get her a brand new pair of slippers, I'll get her a brand new pair of gloves. I could get her handkerchiefs. She likes those. I'll buy her a bottle of clay. She likes them, and it won't cost much, so I have enough to buy my pencils. Come on, Mies, everyone before Mason's closes. Oh, this is going to be a capital Christmas after all. Come along, girls. Beth, be sure to wear your heavy scarf. Maybe I should buy her a very little bottle of clay. That way I'll have enough for one hair ribbon and five pencils. Or maybe I should get two hair ribbons and three pencils. Mommy didn't return that night. I lay away thinking, what a strange Christmas this would be, with no stockings, food, and presents, no Christmas dinner, no father, and maybe even no mommy. Then I thought of father far away, and how odd his Christmas would be. I thought of mommy with the, hum mommy with the hummus. And as I finally started to get sleepy, I thought, is this what, a, is this what a, an adult goes through? The thought made me shiver, and I went to sleep. Merry Christmas, Mark! Never you mind. Everything's about ready, so come on in. I will not have it over. 
mind doing anything else for this Christmas. Of course, Mom. And there's something else. I know Hannah has prepared a great breakfast, but would you be willing to give the homeless your breakfast as a present? Of course. It's a good thing you came before we ate all by agreed to Yes, Mommy. Let's do it. Of course we'll do it, Mommy. Even the popovers? Certainly the popovers. We must hurry. Thank you, girls. I knew you would. I'll put some fire within the car. And I'll push the car. Hannah, do you have any more fresh cream? Of course we do. We can warm the wick heads in front of the fire for me. Can I carry the fire? You better let Ben carry them. Just in case. But of course, a funny force in the ages we were at Hummels. Beth tended to the baby. Hannah got a good fire running, and the rest of us served food to the family whose grateful expressions brought tears to our eyes and smiles to our faces. We then went to church for Christmas services and home for a simple breakfast of bread, milk, and crackers. All in all, the Christmas was so little, yet I cannot recall one more with spirit. Me too. That evening was the, was the play, an operatic, the, the witch's curse. It must be the curse that has delayed my beloved Rodrigo. My lady, do you hear that? Horses in the corridor. Perhaps it is he. Oh, Terry, not to go and find out, thy faithful nurse. Certainly, my lady. It must be Rodrigo's love that has masked me glad, and his love saved me from a villainous cad. Zaza! I have come. Listen, my sweet. As my hounds track down your beloved Rodrigo. <coughs> it cannot be so. Rodrigo, save me. Save me. The minion has fainted. <coughs> and so, my revenge has secured all for me. Zaza will be mine. Don Pedro, your hour of reckoning has arrived. Rodrigo was coming! Oh, insolent one! My hounds will reduce him to- The noise you heard was the sound of your palms retreating. And Rodrigo's already slain all your soldiers in the courtyard. A cursed irony! My lady, arise! The rescue is at hand. Hello!
I'm so sorry. Just with my grandfather. He's gone out of town. Oh, I have. What a disappointment. I shall be going. No, please, you mustn't go. Uh, I only came to thank Mr. Lawrence for all Come in. We can never get any visitors. And you're Josephine, aren't you? Uh, yes. I mean, no. I'm only Joe. You see, Mr. Lawrence, I came uh, to thank I'm not Mr. Lawrence. I'm only Laurie. Laurie Lawrence. What an odd name. No, my first name is Theodore, but I don't like it because the fellows at school call me Dora for short. So, I had them call me Laurie instead. Oh, I hate my name too. Josephine. So sentimental. I wish they called me only Joe. How did you get the voice from calling you Dora? I thrashed them. Oh. Well, I very well can thrash our thoughts, but I don't have to do. What a capital room. What I would do with a room like this. You mean for one of your plays? How do you know about that? Oh, well, you see, I'm awfully alone here, and Grandfather likes his books and is quiet, and I get awfully bored, and um, sometimes you forget to let down your curtains in your sitting room, and I watch you rehearse. Ha! Oh, I wish I could have seen last night's performance, but there were some ladies in the way. I'm so sorry. Uh, don't be sorry. And sometimes, when the lamps are lit, it's like looking at a picture to the fire, and you all gathered around your mother. I can't help but watching it. I have a mother, you know. That's why you come to live with your grandfather. Grandfather took me out of school last fall, so I can be tutored privately. So, here I am. Well, oh, it must be done as blazes in a big house like this. Uh, excuse my son. That's quite all right. Well, if I had known, I would have put you out of Rodrigo. It would have been smashing. I'd have tried my best. I did play my duck in school once. You did? Did you have a trap door? Then you, Lee Cower, and live to be the show and gaze. Oh, the days! And lay your body on thy sword. Lay on, look up. Would this do for your Rodrigo? Capital. <laughs> <laughs> you see, Mr. Lawrence. Ah. Uh, Lori, we'll never draw curtains again. You're free to watch. We are neighbors, aren't we? Not strangers. Yes, but. Oh, your grandfather. Oh, he is grim, true, but he has kind eyes. And his smile works. You see, he's not as handsome as my grandfather, but I like him all the same. Thank you, ma'am. Grandfather, you're back already. So you don't find me scary, eh? Uh, not much, sir. And you think my mouth is grim? Uh, not very, sir. But you like me all the same. Yes, sir. <laughs> You've got your grandfather's spirit, even if I haven't got his looks. He was a great friend, a great man as well. Thank you, sir. But what are you doing with this boy of mine? Uh, only trying to be neighbors. I guess you could say that's something I'm somewhat black again. Oh, no, not at all. In fact, I came to thank you for the Christmas presents you sent me. That was all the boys doing. John! <coughs> this is my grandson's tutor, John. John, has your pupil been attentive lately? Well, sir, this being the holiday season, any student tends to. Exactly. So you think perhaps a social gathering could cause a disciplinary setback? Not at all, sir. Then it's so. I have a party dance here in this house next week. I give you my best regards. I'll be off. I do think you believe in miracles, Miss March. <laughs> there hadn't been many dances since the war began, began, even fewer that the March girls were invited to. But we were meant to have a glorious time in this one. But Amy was decided too young for the dancing, but was still invited for summer. For supper. As for I, I and Meg, we were struck with delightful panic. Oh, how does hair really look so sad? How many long, beautiful yellow ones. It looks fine here. But I really have to go, Mommy. I'd rather stay at home with you. Mr. Lawrence has invited you back, and it will be impolite not to accompany your sisters. I'm going to visit for the world. But I heard it's going to be music there. Clara told me they're hiring 16 musicians. Here you are, Miss May. I got that dress looking happy as I can. Thank you, Clara. <coughs> Where's Joe? Joe! Joe! Sixteen musicians? Is that true, man? Have you got your gloves, Rose? Joe's getting mine. Joe? I heard that Lorraine Garn is going to be wearing that all silk dress that she wore to the harvest ball. Oh, look at the time. It will be rude to wrap for me. Joe! I think I look better than Lorraine in that silk dress. It's just my color. I say we call off the whole thing. Look at my gloves, the lemonade stains that come off. Here are yours, Rose. Those are fine. You can't go with no gloves, Joe. You've never heard of dancing with no gloves. Dancing? Very well like this. Oh dear, does the patch show? Something awful. Oh, that fireplace teach me once and for all not to Joe, sit. Joe, you're going to have to sit as much as you can. And keep your back out of sight at all times. That will be a challenge. It's hardly noticeable. Get your coat on, Rose. 
I've been looking everywhere for you. Where have you been hiding? I haven't been hiding. Oh, this orchestra is marvelous. Then let's not waste it. Where's your dance card? I lost it. Then I shall claim this dance for myself. I can't. For I promised Ray that I wouldn't because... Because what? You won't tell. Never. I have a bad habit of staying too close to the fireplace and... So I promised Meg that I would. What an odd girl you are. It's funny, I know. <laughs> Never mind that. We must do something about it. You can't come to a dance and not dance at all. I'm sorry. It's all my fault. I'll tell you how we can manage. This hall goes behind the orchestra. We can dance there and no one will see us. What a capital idea. May I have this honors, Miss March? You may. Let's go then. Is everything all right, Miss March? Oh, ever so far, I just came out here to get drunk fresh air. I wouldn't want to keep you, Mr. Brooke. Please, come back inside. Well, I'm not sure I'll stay out with you. If you if you don't mind. I wouldn't want to keep you from any of the dancing. I fear I should get more than my fair share of dancing tonight. Oh, yes, certainly, with the shortage of young men. Due to the war. It's expected, I suppose. I see we have similar pursuits, Miss March. What do you mean? Lori tells me you work as a governess for the Watson family. Yes, that is true, although I'm not a true teacher as you are. Tutors, I'm afraid, are not quite as respected as real teachers. But I do like you. But what will happen to your student when he goes off to college? I shall turn soldier. I'm needed. I should think every young man ought to go. Although it is hard for mothers and sisters who have to stay behind at home. I have neither, and very few friends who care whether I live or die. Oh, that can be true. No? Uh, you have Lori and Mr. Lawrence. They have to care a great deal, right? And others as well, such as my sisters and I. Thank you. That's very pleasant to hear. Well, I think I've gotten enough fresh air, so... Certainly. And may I be allowed to finish my dance with you? Yes, you may, Mr. Brooke. Wonderful.
fussed and cried and complained, but eventually we got the younger girls to bed. Then Meg and I went down to tell Mommy the whole story. I'm not surprised that you disturbed that so, for she is unused to people. But as for the rest of you girls, I'm surprised you took offense at such talk. Take offense? I do indeed. If I had been there instead of Beth, I would have told Mommy. Why do people say such things? For any number of reasons, you can never truly know. But learn to recognize the value of praise that come from other people, and don't busy yourself trying to understand their scorn. But do you truly have problems for us as well? Yes, thank goodness. 
Why did you go alone? I didn't want anyone to come. You're not? Yeah. How many did you want to come out? Only one. How many did you think? Well, it's so funny. Wait, what do you think I did? The dentist, of course. I saw you. Oh, I guess I still have a secret there. <laughs> what a strange girl. I don't think I'll be walking you home after all. I never said you could. A fair point. But I have a secret of my own, you know. Do And you ought to hear it. I've been begging to tell you for days, and if I tell you mine, you must tell me yours. Is your secret a nice one? Yes, all about people you know and such fun. You first. Fine, but you won't tell anyone. Not a word. And you won't tease me in private. I never tease. Yes, you do. But no matter. I just left one of my stories in the newspaper office out there. He said he'd give me an edit in a week. Hurrah for Miss Marsh, the celebrated American opera! Hush! It won't come too much, and I didn't want to tell anyone because... I didn't want them to be disappointed. It won't fail. Joe, your stories are works of Shakespeare compared to have the rubbish published every day. Thank you. Now tell me your secret. Well... Play fan or I'll never believe you again. Do you remember you telling me how Meg was mad at you for losing one of her good gloves? Yes. I know where it is. Tell them. John Brooks has it. Uh, how do you know? I saw it fall out of his pocket onto his desk, but I don't think he saw me see it, though. Why? Don't you see? He must have gotten it somehow at the New Year's desk. And he's kept it all this time. He keeps it on him always. Isn't it romantic? No, it's a horror. Just wait till Meg tell him. Here's this. You ought to tell anyone. I didn't promise. That was understood and I trusted you. Fine. But only for the present. I've been disgusted since you've told me this. Meg and John Brooke. I thought you'd be pleased. No, at the very idea of someone can't take you, my Meg. No, thank you. You'll feel better when somebody comes to take you away. Oh, I'd like to see you try. So should I. Oh, I wish you hadn't told me this. It ruffled in my mind since you let me walk you home. No, I don't want to walk. I want to run. I'll race you back. Joe, wait! Joe? Good afternoon, Miss March. Is it? Oh, Joe, how could you go running like that at your age? What will people say? Why don't you stop such rubbing ways? Never! Till I'm stiff and old and have to use a crutch. You have to excuse my sister. There's no use in apologizing for Joe. You were running just as fast as I was. Faster, and I could have caught you if I weren't such a gent. I feel as I must apologize for this much. Is that oh, bosh and nonsense. Joe! I'm going in. Goodbye, Lord. Are you coming then? In a moment. Thank you for the wonderful time, Mr. Lord. Pleasure's on mine, Miss March. Oh, and thank you, Mr. Lawrence, for the gallop. It was indescribable. And same to you, Josephine. <laughs> Ta-ta. Come along, Lori. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Joe March, I'll never talk to you again as long as I live. Sure she is. 
I've no, heard nothing from the newspaper editor. I just about given up when I received a note in the newspaper saying that my story would be printed, but not until the fall when the ads picked up. My payment? No money but the experience of being a published author. Of course, I had told no one except Lori, but I swore him to secrecy and waited till the big day. His eyes shone up to kiss you, Angela whispered, as the darkness came over his face. The sounds of the nightingale grew louder and Viola pressed his hand to her cheek. She could not speak, except to moan his name over and over again. But she would not weep. His death gave her strength that would last her all her life. And when it came time for the nightingale to sing one last song for her, the name of Angela parted on her lips, even as did her last breath. The end. I like that story better than the one from last week. It was so romantic. Yes, but if she really loved him, she would have cried real tears. I'm sure of that. I love the name Angela, don't you? Who wrote it, Joe? Your sister. You? Joe wrote it? I knew it. Oh, I'm so proud of you. Let me see. Oh, Miss Josephine March. That's what it says. There it is. Joe, I'm so proud of you. Your father would be pleased. I was so very much, but I did do my best. You're the most clever girl. Miss Much. Miss Much. I tell her how she's just delivered. It's a father. What has happened? It's from a hospital in Washington. And she shall find a facility that I should call my parents. Lord, oh, protect us. Very well, so I need your help. The preparations were made quickly and quietly. And I'm going to run down to the telegraphist's office to tell the hospital that mommy was on her way. But then Amy did the packing, Meg and mommy went down to the bank to get the money for expenses. But I had the worst job I felt. I had to ask Aunt March for money for the expenses. Of course you can come to me, dear. How could I say that it was observed a man of your father's age and condition to go out to the army? I predicted no good would come from it. But does anyone ever listen to me? We need your help, Aunt March. Mommy has to leave for the first train. And this envelope, dear, is a considerable amount of money. Whatever you can spare, Aunt. He had no purpose to go out in that condition to go fight in the war and leave a family here. I we don't... are proud of Father, even if you aren't. We wouldn't ask for your lousy money unless we truly needed it. So be. I'm sorry. I'll be on my way then. Me and your mother will meet before 4 o'clock today to discuss this matter. And until then, young lady, I will try to forget the impudence you have showed me. Here is a bottle of wine to give to Mrs. Marsh. I assure you that it is of top quality, and when you fully recover, it will be a great good case. Oh, Mr. Marsh, this is not necessary. No. No, I have all. Don't, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. I arranged all of it. Okay, thank you. And by the way, my my uh, son, granddaughter's tutor, Grand. Grandson's tutor, Mr. Brooke, will be helping you on your trip. John, I will not hear me. I already told you, it's all been arranged. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Here's the time for the train, ladies. Let's get this trunk closed up, though. Wait, Mark, here's the money Bob Mark sent over. And here's your mother. Get the army in the money. Thank you, Mark Tears, but where's Jo? She's been gone for over an hour. Mommy, should I check the hole? Yes, Mark. Come on, Lori, time to get the chance. Lori and John, what are you doing? Get the bags. Yes, Grandfather. Thank you. Ladies, the 
deer train is about to depart. I have to leave my goggles. Please write to me. Mommy, please give all up to Father. And don't forget the lunch basket this morning. Goodbye, Mommy. Good night, my dear. Take care of the dog. That night, I stayed up late and stayed away from all the others.
Mother and father don't think so. Your mother and father don't have two worthy wisdom brains and two babies. Grab it. Meg, dear, you will regret this. You are such a willful child. Good day, Meg. You will regret this soon. And when you do, you're not going to even need to. You just won't even realize it. Thank you for defending me, Meg. You heard that? And I thank you very much for showing that you do care for me. I didn't know how much since you said all those awful things about you. And I need to go away? No. And we can stay and be happy together? Yes. Wonderful. Man, what did Christopher Columbus? They were married that summer. And though I couldn't look sign to it, I couldn't help blame Aunt March for it all. The war finally came to an end, and Father was hired as an assistant in his staff for church. Meg and John settled down in a small house far away, and after a year had passed, they had twins, a boy and a girl. Everyone was thrilled except Aunt March, who found it excessive. I no longer worked with her average relative during this day. While Beth was ill, Amy had made a more favorable impression to Aunt March than I ever did. Amy soon was ready to the old woman and was at her beck and call. As for myself, my writing occupied more and more of my time. I was able to sell a few stories here and there to contribute to the family. But with Gloria at college and Meg out of the house, life seemed much quieter and much less fun. Was it because I was finally growing up? Is this the home the literary genius Miss March I've heard so much about? Glory! <laughs> I know. I came a few days early. And I saw a bit of my exams. John Brooks ought to be proud. Well, I am too. I'm glad to have sent you to my face. Come, sit. Tell me. Have you become married to anyone? Not this week. Oh, you are horrible, Lori. Uh, you have fallen in love every month this past semester. Don't be like that, Joe. Jealousy is before you. Janet, I was just hoping you wouldn't give Fletcher a bad name. And you do flirt with so many words. I'm learning. I'm glad you can't flirt, Joe. It's refreshing to see such a dignified woman fall in love without making a fool of herself. Oh, thank you. I've grown very dignified since the last time you've seen me. You have? I see you burnt the hem of that dress, too. Oh, that's true. And Grandfather tells me you gave Meg a scare racing to church on Easter Sunday. I was late, and besides, it was a luscious day. <laughs> you haven't changed. You have. Why are you looking at me? What way? I'm painfully serious. Is it so obvious? What is it, Lori? Tell me. Joe, I must tell you, and you must listen, and we ought to have her. I don't think I like this conversation very much, but I'll listen. Joe, I've loved you since the day that I met you, and you never let me show it. Oh, I wish to say to you this, Lori, but I understand you. I, I know, but being away at college these past two years, Seeing how other girls are, it's only made me want to be with you more. Lori, I understand how you feel, but I don't feel the same way. Really? Truly, Joe? Truly, Lori. I'm so sorry. I could kill myself if it were too any good. But I wish you would have taken it so hard. How am I supposed to take it, Joe? We're no longer kids. We can't always remain as we were. Can't we? There is one other logical explanation for why you don't share these feelings for me. Why is that? There must be someone else that you love. Is there indeed? Someone who loves wild old Joe much, who goes scribbling away. Who would love me? No, Glory, there's no one else. But you would, but they will be one day. And what will become of me? You'll become a sensible boy, marry someone good. I'm not the one for you, Glory. I go about and get my dirt, my dresses dirty, and I scribble away endlessly. That's all? I love my independence too much. I love it more than any mortal man. But you will one day. I know you better. One day you'll meet someone, some fool who will make you believe that you're something you're not. And you'll fall in love with him. And you'll live and you'll die for him. But well, I, for one, will not stand here and see it happen. Boy, where are you going? To the devil! Why, Well, I'm curious, and here it, it makes me anxious. Anxious? 
before. Anxious to go out and do exciting things. To go out and, and try new things, meet new people. I want to go out and spread my wings. Anybody who plan on spreading your wings? Well, I had the perfect idea last night. New York. Remember Miss Cut asked you if you could find someone who's young and sensible and can help her children around the house, teach them how to sew and cook and read and write. I think help would be perfect. I'm sure it would be a great experience for you, but what about your writing? Oh, all the better. I'm stiff in that. My writing has at a standstill. I do believe that New York would be able to help me put new ideas into my story. So, what's the reason for this sentence? There isn't one. His law is. Yes. So, you do not love him the way that he loves you. I care for the dear boy, I do, but no, not in the way that he wants me to. I'm glad of it. You are? Yes. You see, your happiness means that you will never truly be happy as husband and wife. Are you sure? Oh, Aunt Marshall would throw quite a conceited fit if she found out I turned out a glory. Well, let's leave that to Miss Marvin and her club. Oh, Mommy. We shall discuss your new ideas with your father after. So Fanta made to send the Joe March into the wide, wide world. Miss Cook gladly accepted me and all the travel arrangements were made. But leaving Beth was the most difficult part of my plan. Oh, Joe, please tell me when you leave your right to Oh, of course I will, every day. Oh, Beth, I will miss you so much. I'll miss you too, Joe. I wish I could only bring you. But no, please. This is not for you. I knew one day about the leap up and being a crazy guy to you always supposed to be. And besides, I'm only going to be here. And only here. Here, Beth. I arrived in New York, so timid and nervous that no one at home would have recognized their old wild chair. But once in Miss Cook's boarding house, I felt a bit more sure of myself. Make yourself at home. You use the sitting room for your lessons, but all my rooms are open.
common courtesy call. I thought it'd be nice. That's true. Well, Amy, I'm so happy for you. This must be good for you. Not to let new things and improve your painting. I know, Josephine, I once dreamed about bringing you with me. But don't you think Amy is a more suitable companion? Joe, I hope you don't tear me mind. I know you've always dreamt of Gary. Oh, I am disappointed, but I know this will be lovely for you. Let's go out to marry an Italian man. And I'll sit for you and we'll dig in the Roman forms for relic. And we'll carry out all the plans we made a thousand times before. <laughs> Ridiculous chatter. Come now, Amy, we must see that my trunks attend the school. Must you leave so soon? You most don't wait for a deal talk, dear. Goodbye, Josephine. Well, goodbye, Joe. I promise I'll write in. If you like, I'll send my best to Mr. Lawrence and Lori when we meet in Paris. Lori in Paris? Yes. Surely they stop by to tell you when you were in New York that month. No. They left on the distance. I'm not sure if Europe was good enough for Lori, then it was surely good enough for me. Because I'm a great painter and there's nothing else. Amy! Hi, Joe. Goodbye.
did, she wouldn't approve, but you have to get home as soon as you can, Joe. Beth is so much worse than I fear. Monsieur? It's my dear Beth. I was sleep first thing in the morning with I see. I was going to watch Charles understand if I had to leave so soon. I understand. I hope you would let me accompany you in the morning to the train station. I would love to be of service. Could you? Thank you. I... Excuse me. I returned to a dark and quiet house. How quickly it all happened. From a joyful family on that Christmas Eve to this cold February day. When all was quiet and waiting. Can I see that? No, no. She's sleeping in your mother's room. Come, I'm looking. You might want to show out every you sing. Not at all. I was just at the rugby at least twice in New York. So we gathered from your letters. But it's great to have you home again. That will be alright, won't you? I'm afraid not. Each doctor says the same thing. Yeah. Hoping for recovery seems almost vital. All we can do now is keep that comfortable. We appreciate the sweet decision. Always do that for us. That had indeed may take the sweet, unselfish ways. We spent hours together in her bedroom talking of foolish things that end days gone by. It wasn't until several days after my return that we were able to speak with tr about what truly occupied our minds. Joe, so, I'm gone. You must go. Hey, no, no speak of such things. Well, we must. You see, Meg has the twins and John to keep her company, and Amy has a whole world of her. But mother and father, they're going to do all the more, Joe. I'll do the best I can. Please, tell everyone to stop hoping, because it hurts me so to see someone I love hoping for something that won't come true. You're sweet, I love you so much, Joe. And I know I'll be homesick for you all in heaven. Back was with us until spring, and as quiet as she tried to be her whole life, she left us. Her face that morning was filled with painless peace. And those of us who loved her best couldn't help but smile through our tears. And thank God that Beth was well at last. What was to become of Joe March? What was she to do without her soul, her conscience? Well, Beth left them for me. And not knowing how else to handle my grief, I turned to my writing. I wrote about Beth and me, and all of us, and how angry and alone I felt. And the more I wrote, the more I understood what the professor had meant by writing only what was in your heart. But that is enough for Joe March's adventure. Elsewhere, another adventure was taking place. I'll tell you of the romance of Amy and Loy as it was later related to me by the participants themselves. We got in Paris, then a few weeks later in Harburg, then finally there was Rome. Good afternoon, Amy. Glory, you surprised me. How's your grandfather today? Much better. I think Rome agrees with him. We even told the Vatican Library. Do you know how grandfather is in his old books? I'm glad to hear he is well. And I think the Italian climate agrees with her much as well. She's been in an unusually chipper mood lately. That's great. But we had more old churches. Yes. There's no shortage of old churches in Rome. It says that the Cappuccini Chapel is right down the street, but I can't see. Let me look at that. Perhaps it is too hot anyways. Do you notice how quiet it gets at the street at this time of day? Siesta time. Uh, I can't make heads or tails of this map. Siesta time. What a quaint idea. Though folks back in New England can be taken to it. Maybe a bit homesick, Amy? Perhaps I am. This morning I was thinking of Beth again, and how strange it would be going home and not seeing her again. She was so wise, and her childlike face so wise. She was so kind, sweet, and loving. And here I am traveling in Europe with Aunt March. And I think that I've not grown at all. Well, that's not true. You're a great deal different from the old Amy March I remember back at home. Did I? I always wondered to myself, am I anything better than I was? Look, Amy... I know you don't think of me as much, but in my opinion, you are quite a remarkable person. I, I mean, I can't read this map in Italian. Good day, Amy. Glory? It was Meg who told me of their engagement. Amy had written and asked her to break the news to poor dear Joe. I took it well, as they say, but more for Meg than any sake of good natured behavior. What do you think this will be her thing? She's one who loves other people. She's talkative. And I believe that Lori could give her affection. I think our Amy has changed, Joe. In her letter, she seems so much more different, less flighty, and self absorbed. Oh, yes. I do believe we can learn more about her. Joe, do you mind awfully? That's not so bad. It's just that. We worry about you sometimes. You know, you're our 
Arjo, the boldest and bravest of the bunch, but recently you've seemed so much more fragile. Well, this is a fun fact you think it's different. When I was in New York, it, it was a new experience, so I've come back in the world. How's your writing been going? Oh, it's well. I sent out some mail to Professor Baer, so I'm only waiting for a response now. Do you and Professor Baer write to each other often? Oh, as much as I can. I write to him about things that are happening here, hoping he would come. But, you know, he responds. He's kind and he's sweet. Kind of sounds like Professor Baer is taking Joe's heart. My heart? No. We are only friends, and that's all. So don't put any romantic things in your head. I hold, I hold. As long as you promise, you are. I'm minded that Laura would marry Amy, and all the rationalizing in the world would not change that. But I knew I did not love him, so I hid myself away in the attic and wrote and read letters from the professor. Over and over again, I would read them and wept. And in my fancy, I made those sort of mean things that they do not say. Wait for me, my friend. Although I may be a little late, I shall surely come to you. If only he would. So good, so patient, so understanding of me always, my dear friend. I didn't value him half as much when I had him, but now I should love to see him again. For everyone seems to be going away from me, and I am all alone. I would not yield to kiss the ground at young Al and young Uncle's feet. Laurie, you're home. It's really me. Where's Amy? She's at the next place. We were all coming over here, but I couldn't wait to tell you. Oh, sis, tell me. We are married, actually married. How long? Six weeks. We got married in Paris. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Look at you, you've changed. You've grown big and strong since I last seen you. Yes, so you ought to show me more respect. How can I? When the very thought of being married holds me from laughing. You still see through me, don't you, Joe? You underestimate me. Look, Joe, I must say this, and then we can put it behind us. I will never stop loving you. But that love has somehow altered. I love Amy in the way that I thought I once loved you. I love you both equally, but in very different ways, if that makes any sense. And if you believe me, I'd like to go back to the way we were when we once knew each other. Well, yes, I understand, but you cannot go back to the boy and girl that we once were. You cannot go frolicking off, frolicking off in the field that we once did. I guess you're right. Like I said, you do underestimate me. They're here. You'll see that beautiful one. Joe? Where's my Joe? Mommy? Amy? Joe? Oh, how you miss me. Oh, Joe, how can you see so? You might have think that the old Amy you knew was gone, but not even Lloyd could completely change me. Come on in, everyone. Hannah has prepared tea hours ago. Lord. 
Harry said, well, I guess we'll have to get married in Paris before we leave. <laughs> Lie? What is it? Some strange man came to the door and said this was for Joe. And so here ends the story of Joe March. Frederick, Frederick, Frederick and I were married and opened a school for young boys. They are 23 precious years together, each year better than the last. Soon before he died, he said to me, thank you, my friend, for sharing your life. I will soon go and meet your friend, Beth. And that's how I picture it, heaven. Frederick and Beth waiting for me, as they both continue to teach me so much.